hi everyone. Uh, my name is Derek. I am the producer of Lock the Flies as well as the uh, artistic director of Sightlines Productions. And uh, we're doing a series of uh, chats right now because we are going to be premiering our 2016 Lord of the Flies production very, very soon. So we're really excited for it. But before that, we're going to just do some behind the scenes and uh, some sort of a reunion with our entire company. So I'd like to introduce to you today with us, uh, Angie Ho, my very good friend and my co-producer, partner in crime at Sightlines Productions. I'm going to let her share a little bit more of this. Hi, so basically, as Derek said, I'm the co-producer, so I assisted him with all sorts of things, you know, from um, the crew, you know, right from before we started the play all the way till after. Um, and also I was involved a little bit in the creative process with a bit of costuming. Um, yeah, and I'd like to introduce our one and only director, Samantha Scott Blackhall. Yay, yeah. yes, and I yes. am Samantha Scott Blackhall, um, artistic director of Blank Space Theatre, but also the director of the 2016 Lord of the Flies production. So, yay, I'm super excited that we're bringing it back. Yay. Great, so I think um, before we start off with talking about the creation, how this came about. Maybe we want to give our audience an understanding about what the play is about, a quick synopsis. Samantha? Yep. So Lord of the Flies um, is based, I think, in the 50s, uh, 1940s, 1950s. Um, and it is about a group of schoolboys who are on a plane and they're being transported to a safe place. Uh, and the plane crashes and then these boys are stranded on a deserted island and have to fend and survive uh, by themselves without any adults. Thank you for that. It was very, very concise synopsis, the most concise, if, if I may say. It gets so, complicated, yeah. of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. very complicated. Yeah. Um, so could we just talk a little bit about how the idea for even staging this play came about? Maybe Derek, how did you, how did this all come about? Yeah, so you know, Lord of the Flies is something very special to me. I, I studied it for all levels and in fact, I, I brought some like old but gold stuff here. So I was just sharing them earlier. These are my lead notes for, for, for Lord of the Flies literature and I still kept them. Uh, which was quite useful actually to recap and actually, you know, in, in, in the in, in, in the days leading up to staging the show. Um, so, you know, it, holding such a special place in my heart and actually Lord of the Flies is one of the plays that actually got me started and got me interested in this whole journey of theatre and arts and drama. And so one day, and so all along, I've, I've, I've been, you know, ha having this dream of wanting to produce Lord of the Flies. And um, truth is, along the way, you know, tried exploring... Um, putting the show together. We wanted to initially do an outdoor staging of it, but it was obviously really, really tricky uh, <laughs> because of many, many uh, uh, issues. And so we didn't go, go ahead with that. And, uh, and then after, and, and, and at some point, I, I, I connected with Samantha and uh, we, we spoke of, I shared this idea with her. And I think, uh, so, so Samantha would have a different story and, and I'm going to ask her to share that later. But I think she also wanted to, to kind of stage a lot of the flights at that point and it, things just click. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, I think we had lots of meetings <laughs> uh, uh, to, to discuss that and, 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 and then the show happened. So maybe I'm going to ask Samantha to actually share a little bit of her story first and then, and then we can kind of uh, free the blank. <laughs> Um, yeah, my share? story right. is also a love story with the play because um, I uh, had staged it uh, the, for the first time at the Esplanade very many years ago, um, but that staging didn't get to see its full uh, run. So I had I felt like I had never really um, finished. I was never really finished with the play um, and it was just a matter of time for when I could do it again. And so when um, Derek approached me about this play, I was just immediately excited and uh, it's just a great play. It is just an insanely awesome text um, and the characters are so interesting and rich, the journey that they go on, how they change during the course of their time stranded on the island. I mean, 
for those who haven't watched it, it's, there's a lot of surprises. And for those who have, it will just feel new and fresh because you forget how much happens on this island. So anyway, um, yeah, all that kind of uh, the love affair with the script sort of flooded back. And uh, I was super excited to kind of start co-conspiring with uh, Derek on it. Yeah, I remember, I remember it was 2015 and we had lots of meetings and I remember one particular meeting that stood out was at Bukit Timah. It was at the cafe at Bukit Timah. And I think uh, you shared with me the code because we were just telling outside of the stories, right? And, and how we wanted so badly to put this stuff together. Did you remember that code, Sam, that from the alchemy? I remember, I'm like, what? What, did, what quote? Wow, no, tell me, remind me. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm paraphrasing it so badly, but something about if you want something so badly, the universe will conspire together to 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 make make things happen. And I think that was you you shared that quote with me from the alchemist, and I think that started that whole like okay, let's you know let's persevere and let's uh, you know like let, let let's let's stage this, put this beast together, and, yeah. and, and you know and conquer all odds. I think. Right. Yeah. And, and on that note, actually, on, on talking about conquering all odds, I think Angie has lots of story to share <laughs> about conquering all odds because this show is really a beast to put together, isn't it? Yeah, it was. It was definitely. I, I remember the conversations about staging it outdoors and in nature. And like, I think I remember that like, uh, Derek especially was wrecking all sorts of spaces. Um, and it was really exciting to do, you know, the play in its organic nature, right? Um, so how did it end up in the studio? <laughs> how did uh, it end up like back on stage? Well, that, that, that didn't go through. That was actually before uh, we actually decided that, okay, we're going we're gonna to do it in the, in the theatre. And then, of course, you know, Sam, Sam uh, right. uh, and, and to lead all of us. I mean, it just the outdoor staging was, was, was fun in theory. Right, but the, the 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 licenses and because there's open flames, there's you know killing, and I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> but, but, you know, so there's a lot of things that we we had to battle, and that didn't work out. You know, so so yeah. that was yeah, that was also very, I don't know, it was very challenging to, to uh, in, in that sense. But but I'm glad we worked out, and then you know we we were working together, and and we are we've decided to now contain the show and stage it in a and in, in a, a proper studio theater. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah, uh, Angie, you want to share a little bit on, you know, um, how, how, how the process has been. I mean, we, we, we had, we, we, we actually went to Vietnam actually for this show. Yeah, that's right. But uh, maybe can we just rewind a bit? Cause I have a okay. few questions for you and Sam oh, actually. Oh, sure. Yeah. I, I just want, because you, you guys talked about the love affair with the play. So I'm curious just to understand from both of you, if you could name just three things about the play each. What are the three things about the play that made you want to stage it so badly? Wow. <laughs> Ooh. If you could distill it, I know it's hard. There's so many things in this play. That, you know, the three things that excited you so much to bring it back. Yeah. Okay, I think I have mine. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I get to go first, Emmy. Um... Yeah. The first one for me is just is the text itself because it tackles, um, it looks at rather human nature, um, the savagery um, of human nature, and that just the, so the psychology of it really like pulled me in. The second mm. thing um, would be how immersive it could be. So I I love a play that that. Um, just draws the audience in and I felt that this play could be super immersive um, even if it wasn't going to be outdoors and the third for me was um, the cast and who I could potentially work with uh, on putting this together so for me those three things yeah can I say Thank what you said all of the above <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes, it's all of the above, and I'll just add, a, add one more thing. So, so okay, but before that, I agree with Sam. I think the text was something, and like I said, it because it it it, it held a very special place in in my heart. Uh, it was you know the text that I studied, so I know that play very well inside out. Um, and 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 of course, you know the the immersive experience and and, and the potential of working for these great people uh, was mm. really exciting. But I think at the end of the day, for me, another mission. Uh, that, that I, 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 I feel very strongly for is really reaching out to a whole new audience 
And really that, you know, and it's so great that, 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 that the students are still studying this text in school because, you know, I, it was in secondary school that I, I first started, I, I first had a, you know, it came, came um, close to, 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 to reading this text and, and even just literature, you know, just being exposed to literature, it was in secondary school, I remember. And that kind of informed my decision and my choices, my passions you know, and stuff like that. So I, I, it's sort of like a gift back that I want to, now that I have I have uh, benefited from it uh, and I have the ability to do so, I want to kind of produce it for the next generation, if that makes sense. So yeah, that was my, my mission and purpose. Yeah. I'll give you mine, although I've never shared these with you, but I played Ralph. We did an all-girls version of <laughs> Lord of the Flies. Yes, so I played a version of Ra- Ralphina, I don't know. Yeah, so I did a 20 minute version of Lord of the Flies. So I played Ralph and then I directed it for schools when I was oh, teaching right. drama. Yeah. And then when I was studying in Sydney, they did a, a not, again an all female version of the entire play. And I, and I actually built the set like a rig stage with my hands. It was crazy. So, That's and then, awesome. yeah, and Sam, I, know, I was working with you on, the, on your initial version. Yes. If you remember, I was doing costumes and Are you? yeah, that also. Yeah, so this is like, this is my fifth Lord of the Flies <laughs> <laughs> for me. But it held so much meaning for me that I actually named my son uh, Ralph. His middle name is Ralph because wow. I just, yeah, I love the character of Ralph so much and what the character means for mankind yeah. and just goodness of mankind, you know. So, and also being that leader of men. And, you know, if we had leaders like that, what would the world be? So that's why I named my son Ralph. Yeah. That's so good. So meaningful. Sorry. And, of course, you were pregnant when yeah. we were I was producing on, this. Pre- yeah, we were, pre-production, I was pregnant. I gave yeah. birth in 2015. And then Derek was like, we're going to stage Love of the Flies. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm naming my son, you know, Zenith Ralph Wade. That's it. Please edit that, but you know, rough way. <laughs> but yeah, one day it will be there. <laughs> it's okay; it'll be in. Um, that wins. That wins. Sam, remember along the way from the start when we talk about while mounting this entire production, which is going to be very challenging. We 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 were like counting the number of signs and and, and that that click. Remember, and and I think if we would have found out what Angie told us uh, now, <laughs> we were like, okay, we have to do it immediately, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, I think talking about names, Sam, I don't know, really remember this. And one of our, we were, we were looking for, we were still casting. Yeah. And, um, mm. and, and you were, we were suggesting some names. And then I was at, I cannot remember where, I think Peace Center or somewhere around there. And then I saw, I looked up and I looked at the, 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 the short name and I saw Bright oh. Light or something, remember? And then I remember. Texting, and, and I think before that, you were just texting me, like, have, let, let, let's check in with Bright or something like that, one of my actors. I know. <laughs> And it just like at the same time, his name <laughs> came into the picture. I think that's a printing so, shop. Right. On right. Or something. Right. <laughs> so there, along so, the way, there yeah. were so many of these, you know, beautiful Crazy. moments that kind of assured us that, yes, this is the time and it's right that the planets have alive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So can we talk a bit about now, you know, that we've talked about how this whole thing came about. Uh, and you, as you said, Sam, you know, alluding to your point earlier about casting, the cast is uh, the most important part of the play, you know. Um, tell us a bit about how, you know, you, what kind of cast were you looking for, you know, because I know the age range and all that was also important to you. And yeah. I think the the sort of the most um uh, important thing for me was not to cast uh, kids. Um, I wanted to be able to cast adults to play kids, which obviously makes the whole play more challenging for a director and the actors. But um, I, I felt that just emotionally, uh, emotionally, the characters go through quite a lot, and you need to have quite a um, a depth of experience and understanding if you were going to um, showcase some of the things that these characters go through. Uh, And I felt that even though kids could do it, uh, I thought you'd gain a lot more when you see um, an actor uh, portray these emotional depths. So, so that was one major thing. Um, 
that kind of turns the play on its head because obviously the cast is, I think, 12, 12 year old, nine to, to 12 to 16 or, or whatever it was. Um, and yeah, and I don't think I wanted to cast <laughs> young <laughs> actors. I think maybe I just wasn't ready for that. Maybe I don't know. Um, so that was thing. And then, of course, you dissect the characters. And you look at the qualities of each one and start to consider, okay, who in our industry uh, would be suited to playing these roles. Um, and of course, we have we have so many uh, experienced and talented actors. It was then a matter of matching up uh, some of the ca- characteristics to uh, of the actor to the character. And I mean, these are the things that all directors go through when they do casting for their for their plays yeah um, and, and matching up schedules as well oh i mean <laughs> as the producer <laughs> yeah and um maybe you can talk a little bit more about you know in the end we decided to end up staging it in a theater studio so obviously we wanted it um, you know, Sam, your great and naturalistic work, um, you know, and going in that, that fashion. So can you tell us a bit more about how that, you know, how you built the team or how we, we built the creative team? What um, were the choices? Yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously, I was excited when the both of you suggested that it could be outdoors because that would just raise the stakes of the production um, to be in nature while you're watching something that is set in nature. Um, but then when we can't do that, what was the second, uh, what was the second thought, the second idea? And that was to turn a theater or a theater space into that outdoor forest space. And for me, who better to do it than, uh, Wong Shi Wai, because every play I do with him (laughs) is complicated and challenging. Um, and I look forward to chatting with him later in this uh, forum because I'm sure he has plenty of stories to tell. But, um, yeah, he was really the man to to make the space transform. And then, of course, um, what is space without lighting and sound? Uh, and I feel like I just put together the the dream team that I always enjoy working with who I just click with, and that's uh, James Tan doing lighting and Jing doing sound. and you know, just being able to, again, I said immersive, right? So how do we immerse the audience in that space? And it comes down to what they see, what they hear, uh, and, um, yeah, how that's richly uh, woven together. So that was, that, was the, that was the team who did that. Yeah. Uh, dream team. Yeah. What about Derek? What you know? What about their process with the creative team? Because uh, you know, uh, when we started, uh, you know, the discussions about the concept yeah. um, and diving deep diving into how we would put play on. Like, what were some of the top things for you that you remember about? I think I think it was very clear that we wanted from the very beginning a very immersive experience. I think that was very clear. So whether it's outdoor or indoor, you know, we 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 wanted to make sure. Uh, people really kind of feel like they they are like the boys being stranded on that island. So it's, it's like everybody's on the island together in that sense, right? Mm. Um, and I think we, we explored a lot of things and I think uh, also just based on our experience and also based, based on Sam's experience previously staging it, we were talking about should we look in the fire and then okay, what are the regulations about it? Should we, should we look into uh, like pouring sand throughout the entire uh, theater and then we, we, we you know and then we ask ourselves technicality wise and <laughs> every card and all that kind of you know things that we all have to, to look up look into right and then we decided that actually you know converting the whole space into like a little jungle would be a very interesting idea and uh, of course we're not giving too much because we, we're gonna speak to Chiwai at some point but you know the, then the next thing was like, okay how are we going to do that and you know what sort of uh uh, and, 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 and what's the approach and the concept, right? And, and, and in terms of like, do we, do we, do we buy leaves? Do we, do we bring in real leaves? Or do we, well, what do we do about that? So we had a lot of that conversation going on. And I think the end product was really amazing. And, uh, it was really exciting. I think also just talking about the, the design team, they were my dream team, actually. So, so I, I aligned completely with what Samantha was talking about, about choices. Um, I, 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 
I remember actually James was the very, very first lighting person at that time. I think it was a lighting crew or lighting op that I was, I, I, I did a play. So, uh, you know, he, he, he was, he was, it, it, we, we, our, our friendship goes back way, way back. Ting also, Ting, I, I met him when I was in Pangdemonium and, 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 you know, long time, long, long, friend, long time friends and, and, um, and and Chiwai, who has also who, who might have also worked on previous plays, so it's like you know it's it's like good friends all coming together, and then and then Sam and I we 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 met on doubt long yeah. ago, and in fact, and that's where we met Anthony. Anthony was working on your on was doing oh, yes. so, and Anthony is is also our costume designer. So it's just a, 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 a kind of like a reunion of friends, and and yeah. it's such a such a nice feeling. I think that 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 was really enjoyable, right? Yeah. So yeah, wonderful. Let's switch our focus back to the cast. Um, so if we can recall, you know, who, who are the cast members, um, the key cast members? Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Sam, did you want to... Are, are we going to share? Are we going to share? We? Because we had, um, mm. we had Ralph was Gaffia, mm. um, and then his okay. counterpart, sparring partner was Mark Richmond, who, um, yeah, played Jack. Right. Yeah. Um, and then who is it? Oh, Piggy. Yeah. Piggy was Case You. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then what other characters? There was the Simon. Simon. Yeah. yeah. And that was Owen Shaw. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then. So, so uh, maybe maybe a help if we go by Cam's. <laughs> We should go by cams because yeah. I'm jumping around. <laughs> yeah, okay. So we're off team. So we talk we're about team. Now, best Simon. Yeah. And then the, the yeah. twins, seminary. The twins, yeah. Twins. That's the right. Twins. It was Lee and Sutton and Gavin. Gavin yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're and, hilarious. And we took so long to, to actually really find the right comedy. I think we can talk about it later. But let's just go to the people. So Sam and Eric. Yes. Then we have Percival. Oh, Christy. oh, Christy, absolutely, yeah. oh, Christy and Chan, yeah. he was so good, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so I think that is kind of like the Ralph Cam. Yeah, and the, oh yeah. And then and then we have Jack and his team, and of course Jack's right-hand man is Roger. That's right. Where we have yeah. Rizman. Rizman Putra, yeah. Um, and then I really <laughs> don't know the rest of the names of the characters, but I know we had Bright Ong. Yes. And Yazid. Yes. We had Ian Loy. Yes. And we also have, oh God, I think we have one more. We do have one more. Well, we've already mentioned Gaffia as Ralph. Yeah, that's, that's, so that, that's that was it. Just look that's at the it. program. That was it. <laughs> that was all, guys. Yeah. Yes. And yes. the adult, the adult that oh, came and in. And and Dale, Dale played the. We had Dale yeah. sing. The, yeah. The adult, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Loved it. Loved my cast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we took very long, in fact. I think we, we how long? Yeah. Did we take three, two, two months? Ages. Last day, right? Ages. Just, it's very yeah. long. I remember. remember. Yeah. But it was so, I remember it's so difficult to get the fit right. Yeah. And also the availabilities because we had to look out of Singapore and then we were looking at, you know, uh, timings and things and visas and all of that stuff oh my gosh the <laughs> challenges we had yeah, yeah. It, was, it was rough it was oh, rough NG, did you want to talk a little bit about that since you, you were heavily majorly involved in oh that. it might it might touch a nerve you know no, but it's fine i think uh, yeah i think it's, it's everything is sorted so so yeah. yeah, it was tough. It was tough to sort out the visas. You know, we had three brilliant, I think I remember it was three brilliant Malaysian, Malaysians who were Gafir, Lian, and um, one more. Gavin. 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 Oh, that's right. So it was really, uh, it was it was good to get them in. But I think because of, you know, the complications in Singapore with them coming in and out and being on one production, going to the next you know, it, this doesn't just happen with actors, right? It happens with anybody working in the arts. I mean, it's, I've encountered this in other ways as well. So that was one of the challenges that we had. Mm-hmm. <laughs> even, you know, even during the show run, right? So we, we were very fortunate, I think, to have everything go so smoothly in the end. But man, that was, it really threw us a bone, you know? <laughs> really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, dare say, I dare say this is the most challenging production that I have produced. I don't know about you, Angie and Sam. But it is. 
yeah. one of the right. yeah. Yeah. And then all the, the leaves, you know, shipments coming in from China. I mean, that's right. Lot, we will talk lot. about that with the. Uh, we will. Yeah. A lot during tech, remember, because of the shipments. A lot and a lot. leaves. Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> God. I mean, and, I mean, we had, we had such a good crew as well who yeah. were helping us because honestly, yeah. how, I don't know. Yeah. You know, and they were like Joyce was making things in a yeah. day. She and was just, and yeah, yeah, like, like, yeah. And I remember had a, a, you volunteers. Had, yes, you put together a whole volunteer. We had a lot of volunteers come uh-huh. through. Yeah, uh, this I think it was the most. This 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 is a production where I've never had to arrange that that amount of volunteers to come on the show and work just on set. So. Um, it, I remember there it was like we need more we need more and I was like going out and finding people and they all just came willingly even just for a day some people just even right. came just yeah. for like four hours yeah. just yeah. to stitch things or you know oh, yeah. it was crazy so, yeah. but I mean the amount of love and support that you know mm. people were giving us to get just get the show on board it really just proved like you know how integral the yeah. arts is to our community and to people who love it so it was really testament to that. So yeah, like, amazing volunteers from Artscom, which yeah. is now moved. But yeah, yeah, remember that. What what else do you guys remember as being quite pivotal in the play or very you know as forming part of you know your your memories? Because it's you know it's been four years since. Yeah, I mean it. It seems because I guess so much has happened since then. It seems further away. Um, but as we're talking, it's all kind of like flooding back. <laughs> and I'm like trying to, oh, and remember the photo shoot, which we should talk to the cast about because that was hilarious. Oh, yes, the photo yes. shoot. The one that um, we did because we were in Vietnam. But, but actually, Sam, tell us about the photo shoot because it was so... Yeah, we well, were there. I'll, I'll talk to the, I'll, we'll talk with the cast about that yeah. because, okay. because that was a really messy... <laughs> it was <laughs> fun. Time. It was fun. I, yeah. No, I remember being at one of the shoots, Derek. It was really fun. Yeah, fun. yeah, yes. Yeah. And she was there. Yeah, we, we had two days, I think. We had, right? yeah, right, right, right. And then, oh, okay. uh, yeah. So I, I have to say, I think that was one of the the best photo shoots I've been on in terms of the experience of the photo shoot and yeah. being immersive. Right, coming back to the whole immersive. I, I thought it was very exciting, and yeah. I hadn't seen a photo shoot like that before in nature. <laughs> Yeah. In the long gang or whatever you call it. And <laughs> it was Mark yeah. and I, so Mark, the photographer who then also did the program and, yes. you know, all the artwork. So we went on this recce and um, a couple of, actually we spent a few days looking for the perfect place for the photo shoot and like trekking into the most, <laughs> random <laughs> places in Singapore just to find, you know, like mm. untouched places that are a bit more untouched, um, yeah. foresty areas are untouched. But of course, as soon as you do that, mosquitoes, la, <laughs> bugs, la, like mud and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it was, it was, we were sweating <laughs> just from the recce. Yeah. So you can just imagine how the photo shoot <laughs> then <laughs> followed on after that. With all the mud on the, on the, on the, yeah. the And I think I was saying things to NG like more, Hey, can you put more mud or more like, mud. yeah, it was yeah. like yeah, makeup <laughs> was mud. NG, yeah. more mud. NG, yeah. uh, rip that t shirt. Yes, that yes, yes. <laughs> I just, just like took my scissors and just, you know, wow, that was a crazy photo shoot. It was okay. so good. I remember, yeah. Yeah, I remember that one. I remember, yeah, you were on it. I, I some, for somehow I, I couldn't wait to those two days, but yes. And and the photo looks great. I think NG. Oh, like, oh, beautiful yeah it. they came out really well i wish we could do like a oh, you know show the photos we could there. Derek. we could i i could, I could. Edit. yeah yeah there's <laughs> no way bit, you then let me make some make, make it happen i think that's i mean you know honestly that's mm. the beauty of of doing a play like this one is you imagine so many things you just um you imagine the mud or the blood or um, the the way people interact, um, the darkness, the lightness or whatever, and then it comes and it, it happens. And it's just, mm. it's 
honestly, it's like miracle stuff. I mean, yeah. you just when you work in the theater, um, that in the ability to recreate something for an audience is just mm. magical. Like, yeah, I, that, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I love that part. You know, when it comes yeah. to life. transporting. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to ask. My next question was really about you know we we talked about going into the element of nature and playing around with it. You know, obviously even the photo shoot and all that. But then bringing it into the rehearsal studio and into nature and then in, onto the, the the stage. So I was actually wondering in the rehearsal process, Sam, um, how did you you know what what did you do to get the actors? Um, I don't know, uh, release the inner beast, do you know what I mean? How did you get them from being city folk <laughs> into those boys on an island? What were some of the things that you explored? Um, I'm pretty sure we did a lot of exercises yeah. to do that. Um, I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to think whether, oh, I remember something. Yeah, you brought them out. I, yeah, we used the yeah. end of the photo shoot. And do you remember this? We used the Crazy. end of the photo yeah. shoot to do games, some exercise, Sorry. some games, right? Games. Where I think we I, played treasure hunt or something. Yes, that's right. Find the conch or something. So find the conch. Yes, that's right. Someone hit it. We, yeah, yeah, and they had to go out and find it. And mm -hmm. and I guess it was it, the idea is um, to go out alone and to, you know, your own devices, try and find this object or whatever it is in a place that you're very unfamiliar with. Um, and as you said, Angie, we're all these city, <laughs> these city kids yeah. um, who don't normally get grass cuts. Uh, you know, going through the going through the lalang and just like <laughs> really, it was really, um, you know, outside of what they usually do. So. So I think, yeah, that was that part of it, which was just allow them the experiential, uh, what does it feel like to be in a, in a, in a jungle? Yeah. Um, and so then, a, I can't remember. Yeah. I mean, okay. Do, I'm like, if I'm really honest. We organized a soccer game, remember, with the kids uh -huh. at... Um, which one? Ah, yeah. With Andy's, Andy Tia's neighborhood or something. I, I That's think. right. Yeah. yeah. So, because I wanted, I wanted the the actors to um, reference, you know, the behavior of, of kids that, that is of the age of the script. Um, and the only way to do that is to watch uh, real kids at play. So Andy Tia uh, kindly organized his um, students, was it? Uh, to was it students or? I think the neighborhood, if I'm not wrong. Neighborhood kids or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then have our actors go and play soccer with them. Yeah. Um, and then after that, start to identify, oh, my character's a bit like that kid and why. Um, but it was also to to make our adult actors kind of come down to kid level and just uh, kind of get rid of all the mature pretenses that we <laughs> usually have and just play it like a kid. Um, and I think they really got a lot, a lot out of it. Yeah. Um, and I remember at the end of that soccer session, it started to rain. Yes, storm in the yeah. like, yes. Wow. And just downpour, and it was insane. And there we go, mud <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> that we should ask, we should, we should remind yeah. the actors about I that. That was, that. that was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was just, mm. yeah, a lot of, a lot of trying you, to find your inner kid. Um, mm -hmm. to be able to access um, the the various types that you could play um, of the age range. Yeah. Wonderful. Thanks. And, you know, time has passed. Um, it, it, the play was written, you know, a very long time ago. We staged it four years ago. Uh, what parts of the play do you think are still relevant today? Maybe Derek can kick off. You know, at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's about human right the the, the 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 innate nature of human right and and you know the exploration of whether you know uh left our own devices what will we do uh and and how will we react to it and i think uh you know although it's been it's been it's been written so long ago um 
but the themes of it is still so relevant to today uh, about just how to be be human. And we see that, you know, repeat history repeating itself time and time again without naming any big politician in the world uh, right now. But, you know, it's just, it, it thinks, things just, it, it, we just see history repeats itself again. And I think that's the beauty of the writing of William Golding and Lord of the Flies that although it's, it may be very specific to that period, right? Uh, you know, British boys out, out on a journey and, uh, and, 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 you know, of course, right now there's technology and everything else. So it might, might, might differ in terms of the, the, the setting, but in terms of the themes, in terms of the, the, the storyline, in, th- in terms of, of, of just the exploration of mankind in, in the human nature, I think it's still so relevant to today. Um, I, and, and, and I think Sam, Sam would agree with that, isn't it? What, what oh, absolutely. Um, it's funny because I also thought about something completely different. And that is just having to survive in this new technological digitalization world. I mean, honestly, for me, it is really strange. I can hardly find like um, Safari on my laptop or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like just technology is beyond me. But if you don't learn, if you don't keep up, you are seriously left behind. Mm. Um and yeah, it just it just reminds me that it's it's not you don't have to be stranded on an island, but you could be stranded in a mm-hmm. in a world that's changing so quickly that um, that that in itself is a bit savage. You have to kind of find your way super quickly. So um, yeah, it just made me think about that when we started talking about the play again. That's yeah. a very very interesting kind of parallel. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. I mean, you find you, yeah, you find yourself in a, a strange situation. Mm-hmm. Everybody's in it together, but yeah. everyone has different responses to it. Yeah. And then how you respond to how other people respond, even yeah. whether it's remotely, you know, it's also you no. Know, some people just can't catch up. Some people struggle with it, but then there are people who will step in and support you. And you know, whether it's on the island, whether it's us at home, you know, you see that. Um, again, the goodness of human nature yeah, and also yeah. some very poor behavior, of course, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, it's just end of the day is a, is a vicious cycle, isn't it? But it's how we respond to each other that, that makes it what it is, you know. Yeah. That's my, sorry, that's my personal take on it. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I mean, yeah. you know, whether kindness tri- triumphs um, or evil does, which again, you know, those are the main themes of the play and we're just mm. yeah we're sort of seeing that now in everything that's happening around us yeah. exactly and, and actually for me because I have two young kids right so seeing them respond to the situation you know being taken out of school mm. um, being completely isolated no playtime with friends no grandparents it is you see the grief and you actually see like uh, my son like he he really has a lot of emotional response and he's four and a half Mm-hmm. But he's hurting. He's hurting from it as well, you know. So, you know, everybody's feeling it, right? So it's it's really, um, you know, um, I guess a, a very challenging times for us. But referencing the play, I guess you know we're still human. End of the day, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, did you guys have any kind of last curious questions or comments or opinions? You know, anything that you wanted to add, add on? Sam? I'm just excited to see it after having it yet because I haven't seen yeah. it yet. So I'm, I'm so excited to just kind of, yeah, re-experience that whole, um, that whole moment. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, you know, you, you talk about memorable moments of the play, Angie, I think just now. Yeah. And, and you know, I remember, because, um, um, you know, every day I, I have to, most of the shows are school shows, so we have to handle the schools. And after, you know, we sit them in, I have to go and handle the paperwork and stuff like that. But I will always remember, I will sneak in to the theatre and, 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 and at, the, at the back uh, and watch the opening sequence before I scoot out because that, to me, was just magic. And I think, I will not say much, I think we'll leave to, you know, uh, the screening of it. But of course, the, you know, the, scre- the, the being there is just so much, you know, more powerful but 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 yeah that 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 was something very special for me i i will not miss 
that opening sequence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So I just want to thank you, Derek and Sam, once again for you know uh, um, allowing this play to be shared with with you know with everyone once again, and hopefully evokes responses. Um, you know, even today still. So I just want to say, you know, look out for it. The play. When is it, Derek? Just this Friday, premiering on. Yeah. What so platform? It's nine yes. of May uh, on Friday at eight PM, and it's premiering on YouTube at the Sightlines Entertainment channel. Uh, all the details will be somewhere <laughs> in, in, below in the description box of this video. So do check out and do uh, do set your reminders on YouTube so that you, you will not miss it. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you. Thank you.